Welcome to Live from Med City, the online video digest of all things arts and entertainment in Rochester, Minnesota. Presented by Rochester Civic Music, a department of Rochester City Government. Rochester Civic Music, also known as Riverside Concerts. They're a department of city government, and they do live music. They feature local artists, as well as artists from all over the world, from numerous genres of music. As part of series like Down by the Riverside Free Summer Concerts in Mayo Park, the Forward Neighborhood Park Concert Series, the World Music Series, the Artists in the Schools Music Education Program, the Live from Med City Online Video Series, and many other city celebrations. This is their advisory board. And here are their bosses. Rochester Civic Music, your city music department since 1936. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, or at RiversideConcerts.com, where you can make a tax-deductible donation to support live music in our community. This engagement is supported by the Arts Midwest Touring Fund, a program of Arts Midwest that is funded by the National Endowment for the Arts with additional contributions from the Minnesota State Arts Board and the Crane Group. This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a Minnesota State Arts Board operating support grant thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Tonight we come to you from the historic Chateau Theater in downtown Rochester, Minnesota's Heart of the City District for a special audienceless performance from the Austin, Texas-based string band Invoke.
everybody. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. And uh, thanks so much to Riverside Concerts for having us. We are Invoke. I'm Nick, that's Zach, that's Jeff, and there's Carl. And we're gonna be playing a ton of our favorite music for you tonight. Uh, much of it is original. We uh, operate somewhat as a string quartet, but as the, uh, as the intro video mentioned, we're also a bit of a, bit of a band, a bit of a bluegrass group. And uh, we like to write our own stuff and um, you know, do all of that. And uh, we really appreciate you coming. It is a, you know, there's not a live audience here, but it's not truly audienceless because you all are here with us tonight. So thank you so much for joining. And we're gonna follow that one up. That was an original with uh, two more. These are actually both inspired by literature. And we've been playing these evening library concerts uh, all week in a different area, focused on a different area every day. So we've gotten into our literary flow with some of our music. These two are both inspired by the same Ted Chang short story. Ted Chang is a science fiction short story writer, most famously known for his story that inspired the movie Arrival. Uh, this is a different story, one of his lesser known ones, but uh, in my opinion, just as good. It's called The Merchant and the Alchemist's Gate. And we're gonna play two songs inspired by this story, themes of time travel, it's a fantasy, science fiction fantasy type story. So we're gonna be playing two of those songs. The first is Alchemy, the next Doorway.
the place we had forgotten The sands lead you astray These dunes still left untrodden But in 20 days you'll lose her Those 20 years ago Your feet will leave no trace here Yet you ride to let her know place you once called home You'll be too late to save her Yet her words will be your own You're all I wanted This whole my haunting Thanks guys. Well, so we're gonna do another one for you now, another original. This one's also of a literary basis. Uh, this is based on a character in a sci-fi fantasy series called The Stormlight Archive by token-esque of his generation and awesome author, Brandon Sanderson. Um, the song is called Sill. It's about a fairy or a sprite, the kind of uh, this character who starts following around one of the other main characters when he's having a really hard time in his life. Um, and at first, she's like super annoying, like bothering him all the time, like knocking his wine over, dumping dirt in his porridge, stuff like that. And he really just comes to despise her and he's like, oh man, my life's so hard. And now I got this fairy following me around, messing with me all the time. And he gets really mad at her. And uh, but then eventually, some, at some point she goes away and he realizes that she was one of the only things keeping him sane, even though she was the one thing that was driving him crazy. Boy, if that doesn't sound like a rom-com pitch line, I don't know what does, <laughs> but it's a great story. <laughs> um, the song is called Sill, based off that character, and it's about being optimistic when uh, things really aren't going well. I'm not turning this one. Uh, always a good plan. I don't know if anyone could hear my viola in that last one. Woof.
Someone remind me to tune that before trade. Okay. okay. Cool. This is Sill.
Awesome, thanks guys. I'm gonna tune this sucker up one last time here. I say that, but. The next thing we're gonna do for you is gonna break from the literary uh, theme, I suppose. This one's about the American alcohol prohibition. Uh, and specifically, it's about the perspective of a person who uh, maybe lost their job and livelihood because of it and then had to, to find a way to support their family through more nefarious means, maybe bootlegging or something along that na of that nature. Uh, but yeah, it deals with the hypocrisy of politicians that maybe voted one way and then walked outside the Senate chambers and bought whiskey from a guy with a briefcase, which totally happened. Um, explores the idea of what it would have been like to live in that time and try to survive, even though the country as a whole, or at least certain parts of that country, decided that what you did is a sin. Um, yeah, it's called Prohibition Song. And I hope you guys like it. Sir, I can't allow you in But there's a crate of pretty South American gin Just around the corner hiding in the bin Oh, the senators are calling for some cheer Some whiskey blended wine and homemade beer They say don't be concerned, we'll work around The laws we pass will push the whole thing down the gods will let you in without a sound Men like them who pay the bill. They tell us that we can't afford our homes, that our wives and kids will soon be skin and bones, and we'll end up homeless, drunk, and all alone. As if what we drink sinks deeper than our bones And if there's only one thing this has ever shown Never underestimate what is
one thing clear People of all sorts are welcome here Now everybody raise a glass and pour Pour one out for hers and his and theirs and yours Let's drink tonight behind the screen Thank you so much. That was a great. That's a great song, Carl. I really like that one. Well, thank you. It also happens to lead perfectly into the next one, um, be dealing with prohibition and alcohol sales. This next tune is actually named after our favorite bourbon whiskey, The Trace, uh, Buffalo Trace. Um, the song is called The Trace, but we can't tell that to the school kids, so we tend to say that it's based around nature, which is also true. Um, we do love nature, and so that's why we're pairing this song with another original called Dust Bowl. I like to think of these two as, um, the, you know, a single coin, even though it's two sides of it. So we have the trace, um, very light. Um, you can kind of see the clear air, like a similar day today in Rochester. It was amazing out. It's like crisp air. Um, the sun shining bright in your face, the wind blowing through the trees, and you just feel like anything is possible um, with your love of nature. And then Dust Bowl is kind of the um, polar opposite of that. It's the, um, the Dust Bowl referring to the hubris of American farmers back in the 1920s, thinking they could control the land with new techniques to try to like get every ounce of it out of the, as they could, which then came back to bite them by causing massive droughts and wind storms that just covered um, entire states with dust. So whereas the trace is maybe about our harmony with nature, the Dust Bowl is more of a cautionary tale of when that harmony goes out of whack. Please enjoy the trace and Dust Bowl. And Carl Tooney. <laughs> yeah, that's why we do that. <laughs> It's been a week. Shows all week, first night this happened. Yeah, you'd think that our instruments would have acclimated by now. Yeah, thank you again to everybody at Rochester um, Music for bringing us out for this entire week. We spent, um, starting Monday morning, we visited a school or a general area of schools every day in the morning, and then we would play a library show in the evenings. It's been a lot of fun. We've got to meet a lot of people and um, enjoy the wonderful city of Rochester and all that it has to offer. Great food. Great right. food. Can't beat those hot chip burgers. That's right. <laughs> so now this is the Trace and Dust Bowl.
A cautionary tale indeed. We've never actually performed those two back to back and I found that very powerful and we, I hope you did as well. It's kind of cool how you can find little connections among all of the pieces that, that you have in your repertoire. And we're still learning new things every day. So the next pair of pieces are not written by us. Um, we've done everything up until this point as original music, which is awesome and wonderful for kind of being able to express ourselves and play the music we want to play. Um, but we started out playing music not by us and there's still a heck of a lot of great stuff out there and we love to include it in what we do because it's uh there's so many great musicians uh in the world that are inspiring to us so the first piece that we'll play next is entitled robert henry which is the name of the newborn nephew that it was written for of a friend of ours named andy clausen andy is a trombone player uh in a Another band is much like our own, uh, called the Westerlies, um, except instead of strings, they're brass. And they write a lot of their own cool stuff as well. And uh, so Andy wrote this piece, uh, as I said, in honor of his newborn nephew, and really did an awesome job of capturing the change in energy that happens when uh, an infant enters a family's life. Um, you know, maybe if there's an older sibling, all the attention shifts a little bit. Uh, there's suddenly diaper duty and uh, a, lot of <laughs> a lot of interesting things yet to come in, in this new life. Um, but overall, it's super exciting and there's a lot of hope there. And I think Andy does a wonderful job capturing that. This is Robert Henry. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the next one we're gonna do is a throwback. It's probably the very first piece that we collectively as a group wrote together. And it's a, my, my sister actually commissioned the piece, sort of. Um, she ran an uh, early music choir called Palestrina Choir and, uh, at the University of Maryland. And she asked us to come play on her concert. We were newly formed, um, fresh, um, fresh-faced, doe-eyed, young, young composers. And uh, this is the first piece that came out. And we decided to honor the uh, concert and the title of the choir by taking a theme from Giovanni Palestrina, a very famous um, choir and um, sacred music composer from the 16th century, I believe. And we decided to take that and turn it into a theme and variations, getting more and more perhaps Americana as we went along. So up front, you're going to hear the motet that Palestrina wrote as, as he wrote it, just on four um, um, violin, violin, viola, cello. And then we'll slowly start to morph that, um, going through a couple different variations until we get to a really cool kind of hoedown fi final um, final variation. After that, we're going to have one more tune, and then we'll be out of your hair. But I'll, leave, I'll let Nick talk about that next piece after this. This is Souls in the Mud. With the overture being tuning. <laughs>
thank you all so much and huge thanks to everybody here at uh, at Rochester Civic Music, Paul and Chris and the whole team here. It's been an amazing week. Uh, we have one more song to take you out and it's one that you might have heard before. As we mentioned before, we're science fiction, fantasy, literary nerds and what goes along with being a nerd but also being a Rush fan. So we're all huge Rush fans. This is one of their most famous songs and you'll probably know it if you've ever uh, ever listen to Rush. This is Lime Light. Lime Light. <laughs> not Lime Light, but Lime Not Bud not light. light Lime, but... <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.